<laughs> we should have had a tool in our hand. Do I want to make it look official and have a battery in it? So look at this. Look at this guy. Look at the tool holding the tool with no battery. <laughs> I got, the safe, I got the safety on. <laughs> Good. All right, before this video gets underway, I just wanted to make it clear that I am not sponsored by anything or any company within this video. All these things that we talk about are just surely based off of purchases that I've made for myself in the past going into the schoolie conversion process and things that I felt were like really helpful to us during that process too. I also realize how fortunate we are to have Jim in our lives, Monica's father, my future father-in-law. He helped us throughout the whole entire conversion process. This is his workshop behind us. He, we had a lot of access to different tools, his time, his knowledge, and I understand that not everyone has that around them. Pretty much during the whole entire conversion process, I was thinking about how could I make this easier and give people knowledge that don't have gyms in their life. Uh, you know, I don't know anything about power tools. This whole project was the first time I'd picked up anything besides a cordless drill in my life. I'm just not that guy. So this is one of those videos that I hope is super helpful to individuals that are looking to get a better understanding of power tools and what will help them during the schoolie conversion process themselves. Or maybe you just end up getting this for some projects that you're working on outside of not living in a bus. <laughs> we are officially on Amazon Associates. So the Amazon links that you see in the description, if you shop through those links, we will get a kickback of credit for those purchases, which we would be truly grateful for. They will go a long way to keeping us on the road. Uh, we're about to hit the road full time and start adventuring and put out more videos, more weekly conversion vlogs. So if you're in the process of converting a schoolie right now or about to get into it, make sure to check out our other videos and subscribe. You know, the way I see it, if someone wants to sue me, it just means I'm doing something good. You know, enough people are seeing my product that they're like, whoa, I don't want our shit to be associated with this guy. <laughs> God, Jim, I am so excited to have you here this evening talking about all these great DeWalt products. I'm happy to be here. One of the first things I did when we got in the conversion process was hunt for a power tool set. And I ended up going with, uh, I think it was originally a nine piece DeWalt 20 volt uh, power tool set and overall I've been super happy with it and one of the main reasons why I went with the set was off of your recommendation. How long have you been doing carpentry work? Uh, it'll be 40 years this year. 40 years. Yep. Holy crap. Well you know DeWalt's been around a long time. They uh, I mean as far as I know they've been around forever. I mean uh, I remember my dad had a DeWalt drill so I mean mm. they've been around 50, 60, 70 years I guess and uh, they've always had a really good name. Their price point seemed to be pretty decent in comparison to other brands in the market. Uh, I won't dog anyone, but there was definitely a couple brands that were super high up in price and you're like, I don't know if you know that extra money is really worth the trouble or not. Right. But all of these tools held up really well and I'll go over my kit. Uh, I actually did get rid of uh, at least two things out of that set originally and I'll talk about that too. What do you want to start with? I mean, we could start with the drill if you want. All right, well, so like one of the biggest things when we got this set, go ahead and grab us, where are my batteries? Oh, right underneath my face. When we first got this set in, or I did, I got these out and I was like, why did this come with the same drill? <laughs> <laughs> so I guess, can you explain the difference between shorty and uh, you know, the longer pointier one? Well, <laughs> the longer pointier one, happens to have a chuck on it, a half inch chuck to be exact. So it will hold drill bits. Up to a half inch? Up to a half inch shank. If you were driving screws with it, which if you put a, a screw tip in it, you could set the clutch, which would keep you from over tightening a screw or stripping it out. Yeah, which I did quite often. And then it has a high and low speed. So, I mean, this is basically a drill. This has replaced the typical electric drill. This is not a drill, 
although they do make bits that have this little hex head uh, insert that will actually go in there that have bit ends on them. But this is primarily an impact driver. So this is made to just drive screws and anchors. Okay. But again, like I said, they came out with uh, they came out with bits that actually fit in here that you can drill holes with also. Yeah, and I noticed at the store when I was at uh, Lowe's the other day that there's different uh, <laughs> impact drivers. <laughs> I couldn't remember the name. I had to read it off the drill. <laughs> uh, there's different impact drivers that are similar to this that have the different setting modes on them. Right, right. Uh, so I'm sure there's there's definitely higher end products that you could get, uh, but within this kit, this was the impact driver that came with the, the set. Is yours the same? The yes, set? mine's the same as this. And I mean, these things are great. I mean, they will drive four inch, five inch screws. I mean, these things are really, they're made to do it. Yeah. And they have a little like hammer type action in them. And that's part of the reason why they drive better than just a regular uh, drill. Yeah, they do a great job of even breaking nuts loose or bolts loose. I'd say the area on the conversion process that I noticed the biggest difference between them, which I'm sure there was multiple, uh, was when we were using those decking screws right uh, up top. That was uh, that was definitely a big th difference. I noticed that this worked a lot better than this guy. Right, and you'll strip out less screws if you use uh, an impact driver than if you use a drill to drive the screws. I don't like to say I'm a penny pincher by any means, but... <laughs> Do you want me to say it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't like spending money when you don't need to be spending it. And something I had a difficult time with up front during the build is uh, is getting the right accessories for some of these things. And I finally did make a move on uh, some impact drill bit pieces, or what do you call these? Bits. There's a huge difference when you're using uh, impact, you know, this is an impact nut driving set, which is Tack Life, which is like the same ones that you have, which is like, right nothing super high end, but the impact quality seems to work a lot better than like your standard like gray tips that you would get in a traditionally less expensive set, which I got those up front, um, but ended up purchasing impact pieces afterwards. Right, the impact type tips are hardened and they're just going to last longer. Uh, the impact tips will tend to strip the screw out rather than the screw strip the head off the end of the tip. Yeah. So, I mean, there's a fine line in there, but these will definitely outlast these those type of tips. Well, I guess we're kind of on the topic of uh, the nut drivers, which those go into the impact driver. Correct. Uh, these I got because they're so tiny and they can get into like any space that you're, you're you know, gonna be, you know, putting a screw into. Right. Uh, like the Wi-Fi extender on the top of the bus, only these smaller nut drivers would fit into the feet with the head of the screw in order to fit the space. So uh, I ended up getting my own set just so I had that on the road with us. Along with that, I ended up getting the DeWalt Impact socket set, which I'm like super happy with. I know you haven't really looked at this since I got it. I, I just got this, I didn't use this within the build per se, uh, but this will be the socket kit that we have on the road with us. It's got multiple <laughs> multiple locks. Wow. It's childproof. Nice. Yeah, again, the impact sockets, they're gonna be more durable. Um, and you have the six point sockets, yeah. which uh, are real durable as far as not stripping. If you get the multi-point, like the 12 point sockets, you won't find those in impact uh, quality. Mm -hmm. The impacts will be will be like your six point sockets. Uh, these are going to get the toughest of, of bolts and nuts loose, uh, you know, with that type of socket. This also comes uh, with uh, standard and metric. So, I guess like, is that just like the difference of? America sucks and we don't do anything metric, but everyone else does. Is that the difference? Well, there? you know, it's 50-50. I mean, you'll find uh, as many things out there in metric as you will the uh, standard American 
you know, thread. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, you, you pretty much have to have both now. I mean, anything you buy, you don't know where it's going to come from, and you're not going to know what it's going to take to assemble it or disassemble it. And then the last thing on the sockets is I went with the 3 8 mm -hmm. but then there's also the half-inch option. Right. Why would you get a half inch instead of a three eighths inch? Well, I mean, if you're really into like some heavy duty mechanic stuff, bigger, bigger sockets, bigger bolts, the half inch is probably, uh, you know, the way to go. In fact, you could use these sockets and get a bigger ratchet with an adapter from a mm -hmm. half inch ratchet to a three eighths drive if you really felt the need for more torque. Okay. So. Uh, you could still keep your socket set and buy an additional ratchet wrench. <laughs> Tell us what this is, Cole. This is, I call it a Dremel, but I don't know if that's a brand. No, that's a brand. <laughs> this is an oscillating saw. <laughs> I just know it. Uh, Jim's got an oscillating saw, and it's, I guess, Dremel's the Dremel's brand. Dremel's the brand. And so I just call it a Dremel every single time because I can't say oscillating. <laughs> like, I don't even know if I said it right just now. And there we are. Love this tool during the bus conversion process. Just any tight space that you needed to just bur burl out a hole or get a little bit more of a cut off of a piece of a wood. Um, this just seemed to work like wonders for. Oh yeah, these things are great. I mean, you can get in real tight quarters are good for cutting little pocket holes in for like we used them to cut the little receptacle holes in plywood. Mm -hmm. um, it's got a feature where you can just squeeze this down and you can move this uh, blade to different positions if you need to, to to get to the... And I always forget it has that and then just end up using it. And you just stand a, on your head. Yeah, in a really terrible yeah. angle. But no, this and this thing proved to have a lot of power. I mean, it cut great. Uh, their blades, they, there's, they're meant specifically for wood um, or some will be bi-metal and will be able to cut metal too. So right. I spent the little extra money again here and got one that was bi-metal so it could also do metal, right. light metals. Yeah, and if you get into it like a uh, nail embedded wood, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you don't shoot the blade in the first uh, cut that you make if you do hit a nail. Now Jim is actually now the new proud owner of this circular saw. <laughs> we didn't use the circular saw that much within our conversion process because Jim has the larger miter box. How do you say it? Miter? Yeah, miter box. And we and used a regular power saw. We used a table saw. Table saw, yeah. yeah. So, like, this little guy didn't get used much. In fact, the only time I used this within the conversion process was when I went to go pick up that uh, Trex composite deck boarding. And those come in 12 foot pieces and I had to fit it right. into my hybrid. So I just cut all of that wood in half on the spot uh, when I picked it up from the guy's place. You can tilt the table, obviously. Hmm. Um, and it has a depth, uh, depth control. So yeah, we're gonna put it to the test and uh, show you what all can be done with it. I did not know it had the little angle turner thing. Right. Gosh, between, uh, between the Sawzall is that what you call that guy, or is that a brand two sawzall? That's a <laughs> reciprocating saw. Reciprocating saw. I just know everything by what box it comes out of in Jim's <laughs> shop, basically. Um, so the reciprocating saw and the grinder were probably the top two used tools during our bus conversion process. Um, and both of these work really great. Yeah, I mean, I found them, you know, I use mostly electric tools with the exception of like the drivers and the drills. I found with a fully charged battery, these things really, they did good. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I was impressed with them. I mean, they feel solid. Um, you know, this, this did a really good job. I mean, the key to any of these things is good sharp blades. I mean, you're just going to make your life easier. It's going to be easier on the tool. It's going to be easier on you and it's going to be make a better job. Yeah, and I have some of the blades sitting next to it. But again, this is one of those situations where like previously I had no clue that ones are meant for wood, others are meant for metal or both. And it's really important. You're to be, really telling the truth. With it's, that. it's really important to know uh, what your blade's capable of doing or you can put yourself in a position where, you know, something may break off and you end up hurting yourself. Right. So yeah, you've got a, a series of uh, like these are four to six tooth per inch for rough cutting, good for demolition, good for, heck, you could trim a little limb on a tree if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. Longer version of that. And then you've got some metal cutting, uh, finer tooth uh, blades mixed in with this. 
And again, those proved to be uh, pretty doggone good blades and they're all the Dewalt brand. Now, did that come in the kit or no? No, that was a uh, graciously gift to me by my uncle Shane early in the conversion process. So I didn't have any types of blades or, uh, or drill bits at first. And he ended up getting us a couple different accessories and I think some grinding blades even too originally. So thanks so for did, that. So did any of these tools uh, come with a blade, a single blade? Yeah, the circular saw came with in the kit. So okay. the the large, was it six and a half inch blade came with it. All right. I think it may have come with a reciprocating uh, saw, saw bed blade. as well. Yeah, I don't believe it came with any grinding wheels. Uh, but you know, those are really inexpensive for the most part, the grinding right. wheels. You can get those like, a, like an eight piece set on those wheels, pretty inexpensive. That's what they call like a flap disc. And you can use it for fine grinding. You could use it for sanding on wood, um, but they'll really they'll really polish the metal down. Mm -hmm. I, um, I got this for like when I'm redoing like hatchets and whatnot. Right. While we're on the road, so my new hobby is going to be redoing uh, old axes and whatnot. And those uh, grinding blades seem to do really good for uh, <laughs> what <laughs> for for that usage. A little extra light. I look angelic. This we have used a couple times within the conversion process, just underneath uh, the hood or underneath the bus. It is nice that you can set the tilt angle that it's at. I can't say it's like the best spread of lighting by any means, right? Um, but it seems to get the trick done. And with any of these 20 volt uh, batteries, the thing seems to last forever. Two things that were in my kit that I do not have here. One, the chainsaw was not included with the kit. Uh, that was separate, but I'm loving that and I haven't even really used it yet. Um, this also came with a, uh, a right angle drill. Where's the right angle drill? Well, I sold that, remember? You did. So it came with a right angle drill and we did use a right angle drill during the build process. Uh, specifically underneath the bus chassis when it came to drilling out the holes for the hitch. Right. So if we didn't have your right angle drill, which... We don't have any more. We don't need more because I broke it. <laughs> <laughs> Things survive for 30 years and then Cole comes around and breaks the damn thing. Yeah. I mean, they're really for tight quarters. I mean, that that's really what the right angle drill was developed for, is to get in like between stud spaces and to drill a horizontal hole. Yeah things like that. So, I mean, they're not for everybody. I mean, you know, probably, you know, 98% of the holes you'll drill, you could drill with a regular drill. And mm -hmm. there's going to be that a few that are just really going to mess with you and you're going to need a right angle drill. And I sold that separately just through Facebook Marketplace for $80. Uh, so, you know, the cost of this set minus the right angle drill it, or right, you know, it ended up being a little bit better of a deal overall. So, you know, sometimes getting a larger DeWalt kit, even though it's more expensive, ends up benefiting you more because the larger your set is, the bigger the discount you end up getting generally on these things. So if you do the basic math and you see what some of these drills are selling for individually, it actually may be better in your favor if you buy a larger kit and then sell off the couple items that you don't end up using all the time right you, know, you get six months down the road and you haven't used a couple things the last thing that came in the kit was a dewalt bluetooth speaker and i sold that for forty dollars i never even used it um you know i can't say it was the best bluetooth speaker mm -hmm. but as far as like on a work uh site if i was just doing like some small room thing by myself like it would be perfectly fine um, but like that, I knew I was never going to use. I just don't use Bluetooth speakers, but it came in the kit. So between the right angle drill and the speaker, I ended up saving 120 bucks right. on the tool set. So, uh, you know, ended up being a little bit better deal for me. I noticed she had a Dewalt hacksaw blade over here. Jim gifted me this uh, little handle and it had an older blade in it. And these were really inexpensive. It came two to a pack. You could get them. I got the 10 inch one. Uh, but it comes like 12 inch and I think they right. step up from there too, uh, uh, possibly. Standard I think is 12. Yeah. So I went with a little bit smaller one just because I wanted to fit in my tool bucket, which is going to be the only sure. thing I, I carry on the road with me. I can't remember what I used this for the other day, but I used it once. Do you remember? Probably as a screwdriver. I probably used this as a <laughs> screwdriver. I used this as a spatula. Mmm. <laughs> Jim, has, <laughs> Jim hasn't played with this yet. Wow. 
So he already found the safety belt. I didn't know that it's got was oil in it. Yeah. I saw some oil sling. So yeah, there's your safety. Uh-huh. Keep it from won't do anything. Yep. In a gas chainsaw, what that does, it just locks the bar. This is just turning it off, is what it's done. Okay. The big thing with this guy here is I did go ahead and purchase a larger five amp hour DeWalt battery. So the kit that I purchased came with two two amp hour batteries, though they're kind of more of the baseline batteries, which is still great that it came with two and they didn't just like, you know, give you one mm -hmm. or worse, none. Right. Um, but the batteries are fairly expensive. I did find a really good deal on my DeWalt five amp hour battery. I went through eBay. I ended up shopping around for maybe three weeks before I found a really good deal I was comfortable with. But truthfully, they're not that bad. Usually you can get a deal on them, uh, you know, on Amazon. So I'll probably end up having something linked on these guys. But I am really happy with a five amp hour battery. And they're interchangeable with all the other tools. Yeah, how, how far, how long do you think it would go now? That would probably go a couple of days. Yeah. Pretty easy. Yeah, pretty nice. Jim decided he's gonna give you a full demo. And he's going up on this tree branch he's been wanting to cut down for a little bit here. That's sticking out. You get a little cut on it underneath first. Well, that was pretty smooth. That's a good test of a chainsaw, I guess. After talking about everything here, is there anything you'd rather you go back to or you'd retouch on that we've talked about? Or is there something here that you're like, I would need in my kit that is just not on this table to get something done? You know, I really, I think the main thing is still these two guys and some type of a saw. You know, if you were like, I can only have one saw. Yeah. That's all I can have. I'd probably take the Reese up. Yeah, and I, I was surprised at what that can cut through. Um, I mean, if you're skillful enough, I mean, you could cut a piece of plywood that wide yeah, with I mean, that we following use, the line. We use this to cut through seat bolts right. on, on the floor of the bus, which I just thought was crazy. But then, like, you, you can use that to shear right through two by fours. Right. In contracting, I mean, this thing is invaluable. There's just, there, you can't do anything without one of these. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, if there was three things, it'd be this and these two for sure. Everything else is uh, a luxury. Yeah, and if you're doing like a heavier job, you do need to have, you know, what do you call it? Like wired tools? What do you call those? <laughs> yeah, hardwired tools. Yeah, hardwired yeah. tools. Uh, you know, when we were working some like hot summer days in the fall, you know, these two amp hour batteries would not go a long distance when you're grinding off seat bolts. So, uh, you know, I definitely would recommend you picking up extra larger amp hour batteries ahead of whatever project you're going to be tackling uh, they're just going to come in handy right gotta have the work gloves <laughs> gotta have those work gloves <laughs> all right so this was just a last little segment i wanted to do on this video uh not regarding the like i just want that's how my brain works like immediately i pick these up and i'm like drumsticks yes <laughs> i just wanted to go over this stuff because it was really helpful to us during the conversion process and i think everyone should have this stuff in their arsenal and their toolkit right. um so like something that i'm still like i couldn't tell you why you'd be using denatured alcohol over paint thinner or over lacquer thinner but lacquer thinner is that the same as paint thinner no 
Okay, so tell everyone what, what's the difference between these three, and we use these quite often. Okay, so I'll get crucified by a chemist on those, or, or probably a professional painter. Yeah, well, fuck you. But, <laughs> so paint thinner is exactly what it implies. It's for thinning paint. Alkyd based, that's oil-based paints. So it's made to thin those. Just paint. Just paint. But what else now can you, you do? Can, well, Okay, so you can, and you can also thin uh, varnishes, polyurethanes with it. Uh -huh. You clean your brushes with it. Um, it has kind of, if, if, if you get it on your hands, you can feel that it actually has a little bit of an oil, oily base to it. And this doesn't evaporate real quickly. Lacquer thinner is what it implies. It's for thinning lacquer. Now, lacquer thinner will clean, uh, paint off of metal surfaces. I mean, if you pour lacquer thinner on your automobile finish, yeah. if you let it sit there long enough, you will start taking the finish off your automobile. Uh, it will pretty much eat any, uh, any based paint, whether it be water-based or oil-based or lacquer-based uh, paint, it will eat into it. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it evaporates very quickly. Yeah, it does. It's very potent. Uh, it dries out your hands. Oh, like extremely. When, when I get oil-based paint on my hands, I'll use that to get it off. Where I'd use this. Yeah, but this is me not knowing the difference, and right. that stuff really dries out your hands. Yeah, this stuff is uh, super flammable. Not that this isn't, but I mean, this stuff here, if you open it up on a sunny day, you can see the fumes coming out of it. Oh, I mean, wow. this stuff is really, it's really hot. And denatured alcohol, again, that's a, uh, it's a solvent, uh, but the denatured alcohol is used to like clean, uh, you could use it to clean some plastics lightly, but it could be used to clean metal and oil off of things like we used it to clean the oil off of some of the metal pieces. Uh, when we didn't have the lacquer thinner sitting around, if we had the denatured alcohol, we'd use it. Uh, it will cut oil and oil-based type products. It, what it's exact, uh, you know, purposes. Here it says it's used for uh, marine stove fuel or alcohol appliances. Yeah. Um, I've seen people have denatured alcohol uh, stovetops. Right. Isn't right. that the same shit? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this is like uh, probably almost identical to like uh, Coleman fluid. Mm -hmm. uh, again, highly flammable. Uh, but the denatured alcohol won't damage as quickly you have a little bit of a grace period with the denatured alcohol if you're using it to clean something that is a painted surface. Mm -hmm. uh, where lacquer thinner, pretty much if you get it on, on a painted surface, that you're gonna, you're gonna toast it. These are two things that we use quite often, WD-40, and then we kind of went to the liquid wrench a little late. We should have gone to that a little sooner. There was like a couple build days there where like, we just didn't have the liquid wrench and right. we kept saying like, man, I wish we had something to put on these bolts. This will penetrate deeper than the WD-40. Mm -hmm. um, this, stuff, this stuff is great. I mean, it will get into a rusty uh, bolt or nut and it will, it will loosen it if you give it time to work. I've already gone through a whole roll of Gorilla Tape Pretty, pretty much within this whole build process. I don't know what I've been using it for, but it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's just handy to have around. And this is like the stickiest of the duck tapes that I've ever used. I mean, this stuff is sticky, but it's really tough. It's a lot tougher to tear. I mm -hmm. mean, it almost feels like it's twice as thick yeah. as regular silver uh, duct tape, as you would see. Um, but yeah, I mean, this stuff, it, it's, well, you, you, didn't you use it to help repair your radiator? Yeah, we, uh, we, hose. we taped a coolant hose and then put hose clamps and it held up without any issues whatsoever. So I went ahead and just wanted to have a whole roll of it for the road. Maybe a boat will have a hole in it. <laughs> <laughs> quad, 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 quad. We used the shit out of this during the conversion process. And Jim's gonna tell you why quad is different than regular silicone uh, sealants, because I think that's what this is. 
kind of. Yeah, it's a sealant. I mean, uh, I think it was originally developed to go around windows. It's it's an, really an exterior for exterior applications. So they've got it in all different colors. I think there's like 30 exterior something colors. Exterior use only. Yeah, I think they got like 30 something colors of this stuff. But the quad, uh, what's nice about it is, is if you're using it in an application where you got to use your finger to smooth it out or whatever, is you can paint this. If you use silicone, you can't paint over silicone. I don't care what anybody says, it can't be done. You cannot paint over it. It will, uh, like spider web on the silicone, mm -hmm. the paint will. So uh, this stuff will stretch. It'll stretch as much or more than silicone. And the bonding properties of this stuff, I mean, this, you get this stuff on something. Yeah. And you will play hell getting it off. And there's a setting period because, you know, when we installed the Wi Fi extender, I ended up having to take it out because I didn't quad properly underneath the weather uh, guard where the right. wiring was coming in. And it still hadn't fully set, you know, two days later. Right. But it was encapsulated too, it didn't have the air reel to get to it. Yeah. Uh, but I think they say, like, if you read on, I forget what it is, but I think the cure time on this is like seven days or something. So but what's it, once it's on there, it's on there. And we use this for everything with on the roof of the bus, uh, mounting the Unistrut for the solar panel brackets, for the deck supports, uh, everything that's mounted on top of our bus, we use quad on. And we probably... As a sealant. Yeah. And we just we put didn't, it on we, everything. We, we, didn't mount the, we didn't mount the brackets with this. No, 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 we no. put it under the brackets. No, we, yeah. <laughs> So yeah, quad, that's what I'm here to say. Lastly, for the love of God, if I've learned anything from being around Jim uh, for the last eight months on this build process, wear protective earwear when you're building shit. I can't hear what you're saying. Yeah, you're gonna regret it 40 years later when you've been using all these power tools and you can't hear, can't hear shit. Yeah, and work gloves. And work gloves, so. <laughs> <laughs> So I, my hands just like, I, I'm an office person, you know, I came from an office world and my hands are very soft. They're very delicate. I got those CEO hands. So I've probably gone through uh, maybe three different work gloves since the beginning of uh, this process. And you'll start to get holes in things and that's from the grinding blade nipping your fingers because you're not using them properly or you don't have the safety guard on and these have saved me a lot of grief and a lot of skin like my favorite youtube uh show hot ones they give their celebrity guests 30 seconds to plug whatever they want at the end of the show so if you'd like to give a little plug to our audience i'd be uh more than happy to have you have that plug here well i'll tell you what if you're redoing an rv or doing a little small bus conversion call me look me up homestead woodworks carpenter services That'd be a hell of a person to have involved with your project because ours has turned out phenomenal. I think it's doing really well. So thank you, Jim, for helping us make our dreams come true. And I'm sure DeWalt and all these other fine products will make your dreams come true. Till next time, let's go cut some shit.